decorations, but it's cute. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I pretty much start always with the sickle tailor. Yeah. And I take a look first. They really teach you to go around with your explorer front mm -hmm. so that you don't just see everything. Um, too, it kind of saves you because you want to make sure that you mention if you see anything that's broken mm -hmm. or whatever so that they don't, you know, a lot of times you get your teeth clean or people get their teeth clean and they notice something and then immediately blame you yeah. for doing it. <laughs> so, just kind of take a good look. Wait, they composite, I think it's on four. It's like that's some stain and like, I think they did a bad job. Cause every time I floss it gets hooked. Yeah, it might have a little overhang. Yeah. I'll check it back on the x-ray. I didn't see anything. You didn't? Well, that's good. It just gets stuck all the time. Yeah, and it's probably a little overhang where they left a little bit of that edge a little too bulky. So, like I said, I normally start with the lower anterior teeth, but I did not today because you do not have a bunch of build up there. Mm -hmm. So I can just start like a normal one, which is weird how I do it because <laughs> I start on the angles of the lower teeth. And I use my, I start with this scaler and do everything on the bottom, mm -hmm. facials and lingual. And then I go back in between the teeth with my, I can't remember it's Taylor 2 3 or I'll have to look at it and see which one I use after that. I pretty much use the same three instruments with every person. Really? Uh, unless you have sub cow, then mm -hmm. I typically use the, it's the, I don't know the name of it. It's the 1314 and Universal Curette. The Gracie and the... It's not the Gracie. I think it's the what? South Carolina. We have a different... Um, is it Huey? So this one is the SC1314. Come on, Huey. This is the... Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. It's like South Carolina. What is it? <laughs> the name was something. It's been a long time. I know, I've been it's school, okay. But this is the Universal Yeah, y'all don't have Curette. to name anything. That's a good thing. Yeah, Universal Curette. Um, and like I said, everybody has their own thing, mm -hmm. but, um, pretty much I use, oh, I also have a favorite instrument. I don't know what it's called, but <laughs> I use it a lot too. Yeah. I rarely use, um, the Gracie. Hey. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, it's just not really, hmm. these other instruments I like better. And typically if I'm doing um, like sub cow, mm -hmm. I'll get the piezo out and go to town with it. I don't like that one. Oh, I love it. I like the cash, the cabbie. Yeah. Well, I used to use Catacomb before this and I've gotten so used to using the, um, the piezo and I got a really good one right now. Mm -hmm. I got a tip that I finally found a tip that I like. Because <laughs> you know, during a normal cleaning, you're not going to be using curettes. Like, mm. if you're needing to use a curette to get below the gums, that mm. needs to be a periodontal cleaning. Like, that needs to be healing root cleaning. Because typically in a normal trophy, you're not going below the gums, but maybe, it. maybe like two millimeters, but mm -hmm. not far below the gums. So mm -hmm. this is not designed to go below mm -hmm. the gums. And when you start getting below the gums, like if a patient has a bunch of stuff cow, then nine times out of ten, they're either one at risk for periodontal disease mm -hmm. or two they have it. Um, so. Now, every now and then I'm gonna have a patient who has an area here and there of subcal. Then I'll use something to get that off with. Mm -hmm. um, if it's generalized, 
then uh, usually we talk about deep cleaning depending on how much buildup there is. And then um, having them come more often, every three months instead of six months. Mm -hmm. I also have really short fingers, so my fulcrum is, is typically <laughs> on the cheek say, yeah. or the chin. <laughs> um, I just can't, because see, like, even when I'm trying to hold up here, like, I, I can yeah. barely reach this and hold, so I really hold it down a little further than you're really taught to do. Mm -hmm. But like I said, you get in the real world, you do, you do you. <laughs> I always struggle because I'm not used to feeling the CEJ yeah. versus calculus. So I'm like, oh, that's calculus when it's really CEJ. Like, yeah. <laughs> get it messed up. Yeah, and it just takes, that just <laughs> takes time. This is what this is. The 204S. This is what I use every single cleaning to go in between the teeth and approximately. It is... It will change your world. It's, it's, it's technically supposed to be, I can't remember. Um, oh, that's a cure. But I use it in between every single patient, every single time. Okay. And it, um, it is my go-to. <laughs> if I had to pick one instrument, if I could only ever use one instrument to clean teeth with, it would be this one. <laughs> and that's just because it gets out, um, like a lot of patients who have bone loss and they have crowns, mm -hmm. it really helps to get in between the teeth. <laughs> You use it like a universal. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. We we yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you like I said, you get out and you start realizing what works for you. <laughs> and really, um a hygienist that was here before, she never used this. Ever. And so she gave me all of hers because mm -hmm. I had some cassettes that where I didn't have mm -hmm. this and if I don't use this one I'll, I'll use the Taylor 2-3. I don't think we've gone to the second cassette. We're still in the first one like with the normal like um like the Great Seas and the Columbia. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. So we'll well next and turn there's around. a time that I I mean there is literally way more. I just have my basic kit yeah. and I have everything in it that we used in hygiene school. So like okay. whatever instrument that was required, like mm -hmm. that's pretty much what I have in my kit. And literally, like I said, most of the time I'll only use like three, that's two good, or three oh, of the good. instruments. I think you can close your mouth off. I'm kind of like nervous to bite down now because they were telling me it could like come back up. Uh, this? Yeah. So this different? is um, called Safe Flow. So basically, they're more expensive. Yeah. But basically, it has this thing on it, whereas normally this would go. Um, so this little extra piece is supposed to, it prevents that. That's mm -hmm. awesome. So I that's why, I'm, yeah, because like us, we've been in this a long time. Mm -hmm. so. We're not, we're used to have the patients are just yeah, automatically yeah. closed around the straw. So when you have this little attachment on here, that keeps that, oh, I think they said like backflow or whatever yeah. from doing that. So I can see why it's expensive because we go through them like crazy. Yeah, yeah, That's you do. Awesome. But I mean, people are used to closing I like that. around them. So, <laughs> okay, cool. It's like, yeah, we have a little pink one, so like we know it's gonna come back up eventually. Yeah, and I, I don't know. I don't. I, sometimes I'm like, 
is that really a thing? Like, you know, because there's so many things that they come up with. Well, this could do that. Yeah. Well, it's like, well, okay, well, it could, but has it? And is it really going to? So we just go with that so there's no controversy this, over it. You this know? is dope. Like this it. is my other favorite instrument. I don't know. One, two, nine. I don't know. You're like a pirate's hook. Yeah. Um, I love this. Know. Who makes your instrument? I don't know. I don't even know where this came. They're all different. Oh. Most of them are Q3D. Yep. Yeah, okay. That's what we have. Um, but this one, yeah, these two are completely different. Really, we usually get whatever is on sale. Because <laughs> you have to order a lot. <laughs> This one, um, I get uh, a lot of like slight sub count under the gum with it. It's just a little thinner on the edge and I feel like I can go just a little bit below the gums without doing any damage. Is it, is it correct? I have no idea. <laughs> I was about to say you can go sub. But it doesn't no seem idea. like it cuts as... Um, mm -hmm. I like it a lot, but it's just the way it's turned. And I use it a mm -hmm. lot for um, these teeth down here. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes people, patients have teeth that are rotating and turning, yeah. and I can't get that thick, sickle in down oh. there. So I'll use this guy. My patient has that, but I don't know if we can use that yet. Oh. That's interesting. So this is my jam right <laughs> And I also use this a lot on these upper teeth mm -hmm. to get sub cow all mm -hmm. from right mm -hmm. underneath the gum here. I don't use this every patient, mm -hmm. um, but I, I, a lot of times I will if I have it. I don't have it in every set. Mm -hmm. You see how it goes just right in between there? Mm -hmm. To me, all that's on my calculus. That's yeah. how bad, like, I am. Yeah, it's just the two. You'll, it takes time. It takes a long time to kind of get that tactile mm -hmm. sensitivity. And even now, like, I'll have some friends here that, like, sometimes, like, these teeth just the way the enamel is mm -hmm. will feel like there's something there and like even my friend who worked for like a period on this and all those stuff she um would even be like i keep thinking there's sub there but it's just the way the tooth feels you know because she's like i'm not getting anything off mm -hmm. um and then a lot of times when you get the sub off like if it's thick it will be a little black ball like a little hard black it, it'll be black so you'll know you got it <laughs> Yeah, it turns black. Had that yet. Yeah, it turns black when it gets under the gums. Mm -hmm. um, Did not know. Yes. Yeah. So that's how you turn them out. Sometimes you'll see it come out. Sometimes you won't. <laughs> so a lot of times you'll be like, "Yep, yeah, got it." <laughs> that's how you know you got that out. Of it. I caught myself flossing better. <laughs> yeah. So this to me is the number one complaint of patients is flossing too rough. So I try to make sure that I really see saw it down mm -hmm. and I'm not, you know, just mm -hmm. being a little reckless with it, trying to get in a hurry. <laughs> and people will comment on that if they've seen, you know, people before that really went to town with the walls, mm -hmm. they'll say, oh, you know, because it's just like little things with patients that make a difference. See, I totally did that backwards. Like, I literally did every single thing. But 
That's just hey. how I do it. How long do you have to clean? Um, well, for everything, like clean, chant, like all that, um, an hour before my next section, like every hour on the hour. So, <laughs> unless, and, um, unless it's kids, then mm -hmm. sometimes we'll do like 30 minutes each kid in one hour, mm -hmm. like if it's siblings. Mm -hmm. But we don't do that as much anymore unless they're really little. Because when you start doing neck grades and all this other stuff, um, and when you're seeing four columns of hygiene across mm -hmm. every hour on the hour, and you have two doctors, it's hard for them to check. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it, it gets them out of balance when you're having to check an extra. Oh, I like it. I like it. It's a ring. <laughs> yeah. It's a it comes with our pricey tape. Oh. They used to send the metal ones, and I hate those. Oh. But these are perfect. Hmm. One thing I'm really bad about is not using a fulcrum for everything because my <laughs> fingers are so short. <laughs> but I do try to brace it with like this finger mm -hmm. if I'm not able to use the fulcrum. <laughs> When I go back over there, Corey will sometimes. Mm. Especially around the wisdom teeth in the back. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll go back over there on the bottom. Do you ever use the air polisher? Um. No. <laughs> I don't think they have one. I think I'm wishy. I kind of along with the sand. Mm -hmm. the sand. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have one of those here. A lot of hygienists. I've never actually even used one. Um, we've had one in Pedo, but the mess it made, I was always like, mm -hmm. you know, and everybody complains about it. But it's really good for most of the stain. Okay. So see how I just do it Quick. Um, because I'm like, <laughs> and really, um, it's because when I was pregnant and had pregnancy brain, I'd be like, <laughs> and I, I'm a talker too, so like, I'll be getting to talking and I'm like, oh. I love it though, I love a talker. I'd be like, did I pass <laughs> Did I? You know, and so this way, if I do it the same every time, then I, there's no room for mm. error. Because they notice if you forget something, you think, oh, I would never forget, but no, you can, you mm -hmm. literally, like, can easily forget things. And a lot of this, I can tilt up just a little bit, but a lot of this takes, just takes time doing it, like doing it when you're, you know, learning stuff. I learned stuff. Like, I see something new every day. Hmm. And I've been doing this 11 years. And I mean, you just have to realize if you're not going to be. I don't know. Even <laughs> when you get out of school, like, there's still so much to learn. Yeah. That's the best thing. Uh, it's nerve wracking, yeah, though. Yeah, it is. Um,. But you just have to go into it, like, and be like, you know what, like, it's okay to not know everything. Yeah. <laughs> do you do anesthesia? Mm -mm. No. Not here. We do nitrous. Okay. Which I hate it. Um, <laughs> well, I hate for people to do it for their cleaning. Oh, yeah, all the time? Because it's just, uh -huh. it's, it just gets in the way. <laughs> and it's just an extra thing to have to do, and it, you know, in the the amount of time. Because mm -hmm. you gotta get them hooked up, you know, you gotta, you'll understand mm -hmm. one day. <laughs> okay. It's just one extra thing. Close down just a little bit. And stretch. Um, I don't think so. Thank you. She is another hot gymnast. Oh, okay.
We don't have any assistance for us. Say. We just have assistance for doctors. Okay. Like a lot of some states do have hygiene assistance. Isn't it comes like out of your check, doesn't it? I don't know. Not I know that some of them, like if you choose to get one, it comes out of your check. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We don't have that here. <laughs> Um, but we are a really good team here. Mm -hmm. We all pitch in. Like the, you know, I'll go back there and clean, you know, for an assistant or mm -hmm. do whatever. They'll come up here and chart for me when I need someone to chart or carry a charting. Yeah. So, and not every office is like that, that's for sure. What's the like, worst part, like, that you don't like? About the insurance? Yeah. I can be like the process and the paperwork. Um, let me think. The work <laughs> or about the machine. Huh. Well, the worst part for me about working is that I just want to be a stay at home mom. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as getting to go, I think it's, I think the most frustrating part to me is the pay in Alabama. Oh, yeah compared to other states when you're doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. That to me is the most frustrating part. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, one thing I just really um, don't love is doing like scaling and root planing around a bunch of crowns because uh, you're always worried that the crown is going to pop off. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like uh, I would rather clean like heavy tartar, like pouches of it, yeah. than a bunch of soft plaque. It just, you know just what I mean? seems fun too. Just from not brushing. Uh, I think that's the most frustrating part is whenever you've seen someone for years and years and you know, you've told them the same thing and they just, <laughs> they just don't do them. And to me that's more frustrating than anything mm -hmm. is non-compliance. Because you're doing all this work here, and if they don't do their work at home, mm -hmm. then, you know, what good is that? It's crazy how you don't really adjust the seat. Like, I'm always up and down. Wow, well, that's probably why my, my back hurts and my neck hurts. You don't eat a loop? Mm -hmm. I just never have, so I don't know that I could get used to them. You know what I mean? Like if, if <laughs> yeah. that wasn't like a real big thing mm -hmm. um, when I was in hunting school, and um, like I, I think only one of our hygienists here uses them. Mm -hmm. um, wow. And she's a, I think she's a newer, like a mm -hmm. you know more recent hygienist. Um, mm. It's just funny how the things that like <laughs> are a thing and then things that aren't. Yeah. So I was working in the pediatric office when I went to hygiene school. Mm -hmm. So you really, I mean, that's not something that you really are thinking is a necessity. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get used to something <laughs> after you haven't done it for that. You know, I don't like, have them, but it seems like everybody else in my class has them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, if I would have started with it, mm -hmm. I would be. I probably would benefit from it. But, like I said, it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks sometimes. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. It's just interesting to see like how the real world is, like you said. Yeah, I mean, you just kind of do what's best for you. Like just 
trying to get sub cow off mm -hmm. one, I think, gravy. I don't know. That's, you know, sub cow gets hard. It's hard to get it out. All right, close down just a little bit. I'm going to stretch this out. Those pots, do you know? I know you said it came with them. Um, pumps, but, um, stuff with your help and polish. Uh, these little things? Yeah. They just come with the box. I got five. When you buy, um, when you buy them. Mm -hmm. So I collect them. Nobody else uses them at me. So I collect them every time yeah. so that I have one that I leave in my kit. Mm -hmm. For each patient so that it's, you know, sterilized. Okay, can I tilt back this a little bit perfect? I know um, recently I heard someone say that they had talked about starting to teach selective polishing. Mm-hmm. Do y'all do that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's going to be the hardest thing to mm -hmm. say for, um, for y'all because, you know, people associate the polishing with their teeth still being uh -huh. clean. So when you start <laughs> polishing just the teeth that need it, yeah, pickles. <laughs> Then that it's gonna be hard because people aren't used to that. I agree. Say. I just say do the whole thing. Yeah, it, to me, that's what I do. Um, that would never fly with patients here, <laughs> except for the patients who absolutely hate this part. Uh huh. <laughs> uh, and that's one thing you'll find. Like I have a patient who brings her own floss. Like she swears up and down that whatever floss we have is not the same that she has. And it, it. And it is. <laughs> uh, but she swears so she'll bring home floss so she wants me to use her floss mm -hmm. I have a patient who absolutely does not want me to floss mm -hmm. and um, I have a patient who absolutely does not want me to spray so no polish um, I have a patient who does not want me to rinse them, them out they want to still sit up and get it the sink and rinse out so, mm -hmm. they've got their quirks about stuff. Um, you know, we ask you to hand sanitize when you come in. Mm -hmm. I have a patient who says that that triggers her asthma, so she cannot use hand sanitizer. <laughs> so, I mean, people are, you'll, you'll realize people are quirky. Yeah. Um, I just make notes in the chart so that I know, so that we don't have to go through the mm -hmm. same thing every single time. Of, they don't want to I have patients who have to have the next pillow. Um, especially my older geriatric patients. Mm -hmm. Um, I have patients who will not let me use any hand instruments. They only want the piezos used on them. Mm -hmm. Um, so I haven't, I don't know about that. Of course, I've been seeing these people for years, so I know who likes what. I mean, you can just start to remember. Uh, I have some patients who, let's see. Um, they have to wear headphones because they can't stand the sound. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I have patients who do not like the chair massages. And they do not want them on when they sit down. I don't see how some of this is legal because, like, ethics class, they, like, push that a lot. Like, if you're not doing exactly what you need to to, like, clean them and make sure they're good, like, it's kind of like you're, you're wrong. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just one of those things, you just chart it. Patient refused mm -hmm. it. Um, so, can you do a treatment refusal, or is it specifically like? Um, the way we do it here is we just, um, like, if they refuse any kind of treatment, mm -hmm. we make them sign a okay. refusal form. Gotcha. So, like, if they refuse, um, like, period mm -hmm. treatment, we have a form that they sign that says, we acknowledge, we told you that you have periodontal disease. Mm -hmm. These are the pocket deaths, and... This is 
you know, what we recommended yeah. and you, they sign it to basically say they refuse treatment. We note that in the chart, we file it in the chart, yeah. so we have that so they could not come back and say, well, you never told me I had mm -hmm. periodontal disease. And that happens a lot. Yeah. Or you never told me I had a cavity on this tooth. Well, yes, we did. We told you this time, this time, and that time, but if you didn't get it filled, mm -hmm. then it was going to blow up. So you have to cover yourself. You mm -hmm. have to make sure if they don't want x rays, that's a biggie. A lot mm -hmm. of people are freaked out by x rays, yeah. that radiation, the thing mm -hmm. that's, you know, going to kill them. So if they, if they don't want x rays, you tell them, look, that's, you know, that's your personal choice, but we recommend we have x rays yeah. this amount of times, whatever. So, yeah. To check underneath crown. See what we can't see. Mm -hmm. And it's it, crazy. they'll still deny it, and that's fine. You get them to sign the form. Like you just. But you still clean them. Yes. Okay. Because I think with schools, like if you, they don't want it, then we can't help them. I mean, it depends on probably what dentist you work for. Mm -hmm. That's. But we just make a note of it. Like if you don't want this, yeah. you don't want that. That's Specific. fine. We'll see you. But you have to sign this form of refusal for you wow. so that it covers us and it covers you. It's crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's a lot of covering yourself. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure Definitely. that you write very thorough notes mm -hmm. um, because patients will call and say, hey, you know, and just like with a new patient or something, mm -hmm. make sure nothing's broken because we find people call and it's happened to me. Someone called and said, hey, um, my bridge is broke and it, and it had to be from the hygienist. Well, so then they get a free bridge because you don't want to argue with them on that because they're a new patient, and now with social media, everybody's the right yes. thing out there all the time. So, so if that happened, like, this question I was going to ask, I already forgot. Like, do you tell them after you notice it, or do you, like, is it Yeah, when I notice it, I'll say, did you know this tooth is broken? Oh, okay. okay. Or did you know that um, the filling's out? Okay. Or is that one big thing, too, is retainers. They mm -hmm. hate when you break a pull off a retainer. It's your fault. You know, so yeah. it doesn't matter that it was blue since it's been loose for six mm -hmm. years. You pulled it off, it's your fault. So with that, I check that before we do anything, mm -hmm. and I make sure it's tight to get the tooth. If there's glue missing in any areas, mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, you got some glue missing back here. Okay. It's still attached, but eventually it could come off. Like I, and I note in the chart, check mm -hmm. the retainer before cleaning, you know, or check this. It's, that's, okay, you asked me what my one thing, that's probably top. Is making sure that you're writing all this stuff in there. Anything you talked about. If a patient mentioned they had one sensitive tooth, but it only was sensitive once and it hadn't happened again and it's been six months, you wrap yeah. that in there. Because they'll call and say, hey, I talked to my hygienist about it too. Mm -hmm. Well, if it's not in the notes, it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. you know? And so you never know when someone's going to try to take you to court or something. Yeah. So that's my thing is trying to remember every little thing, every little detail. Um, so that nothing comes back on the board. That's my number one thing. I don't want to miss something. You know, and yeah. just, we're human. We're going to miss things. Mm -hmm. You're going to miss decay. You're going to miss it's um, scary. a period on the pocket. And that, I think the stress of it is what um, I really struggled with at first. Mm -hmm. Because you just, that's a lot of pressure on you, mm -hmm. you know, uh, as, a, just a, as an individual. What do y'all, what system do you use? For charting and stuff? Yeah. We use um, Dentrix. Oh, good. Okay. This a lot, there's another popular one called Eagle Salt. A lot of people use that one, but we use Dentrix for our charting and Dexter's for our x-rays. Okay. And we do all yeah. visual x-rays. And that's the that's what worries me the most. Like I know, like now we had to do like traditional and like the the normal film, but I know like most people only use digital. Yeah. I was like asking her a bunch of questions. <laughs> do you um sharpen the yeah. instruments how often do you sharpen them we're so busy we don't sharpen them as much as we should but yeah i have like a dull tool and i'm like i don't even know when to sharpen it like do you sharpen before or after you clean 
before. <laughs> before. And a lot of, and really in school they told us sharpen them before every single patient. Yes. You just in the real world you just don't have time to do that. Mm -hmm. Like Megan, she's so nice. Like we have a ton of hygiene protect and she comes up here on like a weekend and right. like, gets here early in the morning and mm -hmm. she'll sit and sharpen all of them for us like so, dedication. Yeah, she's really nice. I love like, it. Really sweet to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can handle this. It's like between our wrists. Oh no, I can turn it off. You can no just, you can just, huh? and just film you then. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't face. filming you. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm so nervous. No, 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 no. <laughs> like I said, that's the world we live in is someone's looking to criticize you. And I'm like, oh, wait. Especially people who haven't been in the real world to know. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm looking at things. Where are you in hiking school at? At Fortis. Okay. <laughs> Some really good trees on these nowhere, so I think it's good. Thank you. Maybe one more thing. Do you have to go through this? Yes. Well, not, not too bad. Mm -hmm. Do you have to go through this? 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 Do